Well, good morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. It is the first Sunday of December, and when you think about Christmas, the message of Christmas is very relevant for all of us this year. You see, um, in the midst of great darkness, there is light. A light will shine in the darkness. The story of Christmas is that God would speak into darkness and he would bring hope and he would bring light. Um, In the midst of brokenness, there are blessings. Regardless of what the brokenness is that you are working through or have experienced, God will bring his blessing to that. Uh, Christmas is all about hope. It's all about God turning something that was not into something that is and can be. That's what Jesus was born for. And today we begin this series talking about the blessing of Christmas. I really can't think of a better time for us to celebrate the blessing of Christmas than right now. See, here's the thing. Uh, 2020 uh, will be a year that many of us will want to forget. That is a reality. Uh, For some, I understand it it has not affected you, but I think for the vast majority uh, of people around us, it has impacted them in some capacity, uh, physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually. There has been some kind of impact. And, And with that, we all need to understand The blessing of God in the midst of pain, the blessing of God in the midst of darkness, the blessing of God, and Christmas is all about that. Hey, hey, I was even visiting with a friend early this morning about how this year you just don't know what to expect. Thanksgiving was different. Christmas may be different. But there are things that we hold on to as people that help us understand what really matters. And it does matter. It matters a lot because there are gifts beyond what we see that are truly gifts of the heart. And we're going to begin to look at those today. We're going to go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. The Gospel of Luke chapter 2. And so let me get you to get your Bibles and turn there. I'm going to read from the New American Standard Version today. And as you in the room are, are turning to that, let me, let me say a word to our online family. Uh, this morning, I, I know that specifically some of you, um, and, and I, I have grieved with you. Some of you are walking through right now your home being impacted by a virus. And I just want you to know, I love you. This church loves you. Um, Some of you, um, you have lost loved ones during this season. And and my heart um, grieves with you and stands with you in that. Um, Several of you, um, you've reached out and we as a church family, we love you. And I know that you're there this morning. And then there is this reality that some of you today, you're battling things in your body unrelated to COVID and some of these other battles. And and I just want you to know that our prayer team continually prays for you. I continually pray for you. You are all deeply loved. And there are blessings in the midst of brokenness. As a matter of fact, God has a way of using broken moments in our lives to bring forth the greatest blessings and the greatest treasures. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I I encourage you in our online family, wherever you are, however far you're scattered, this word is for you as well as for those of you here today. So Luke chapter 2. It is the Christmas story, and you really can't get around Christmas in the church without focusing uh, on why we capture the month of December. We capture that as Christians for a very specific reason. And, And it is about light, and it is about hope, but there's a very specific reason. And so today I I read with you Luke chapter 2, Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. We're only going to read the first seven verses this morning, but I encourage you to follow along. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. And this was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on their way to register for the census, each to their own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David. 
And he went there in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And while they were there, the days were completed. Those days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths. She laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Let's pray together. Father, I, I thank you that there are blessings in the midst of our brokenness, that there is light in the midst of darkness. And I thank you that all of that ultimately flows from a God-given hope. That comes through your son Jesus. Will you draw our hearts to him. This holiday season. In his name I pray. Amen. Today's life lesson. If you're taking notes. I encourage you to write this down. And throughout this series. We're going to focus on. One particular blessing. Each week. For our four Sundays of December. One very meaningful. Blessing. That all of us can experience in the midst of Christmas as we give our hearts and our thoughts to what matters most. And again, um, as has been the, the case through this whole season of life, I have very deliberately penned these words for you. Because they matter, because it's meaningful, and because it's important. And the life lesson today is this. The most meaningful pieces of life. The most meaningful pieces of life are often found among our most difficult days. The most meaningful pieces of life are often found amongst our most difficult days. And today I want to talk to you about meaningful pieces. The blessing of Christmas is truly identified and experienced when you can find the meaningful pieces that God has given to you. And they are there. They are not the things that in this season of life we have learned that the world will strip away. The meaningful pieces of life, the meaningful pieces of Christmas, you're going to discover. They may not be those social parties that you thought made Christmas Christmas. You really hardly can go to those. And if you do, you run the risk of other things. Many people have experienced that. So that gets stripped away. Um, the events. I, I noticed here in our city uh, this past week as um, I was watching my oldest son in, engage in a sports activity. Um, he was participating in something at one of our local stadiums. And behind us was, was City Park. And, and, of course, we know, right, uh, Celebration of the Oaks and the Lights, how that makes us feel here in New Orleans. Um, that is something to us. But, but this year you have to drive through it, right? Um, it's not the same. And so you begin to realize that some of the things that perhaps identify the season of life that you were going through and that were meaningful, they, they change. And so there are new pieces that come to the forefront, meaningful pieces. They're, they're not necessarily those social events. They're not necessarily the secular events. As a matter of fact, you'll even find that perhaps this Christmas, gifts take on a whole new meaning. Um, some people find themselves limited financially, really managing financially. Um, you find that, boy, um, it's a different season of life. And so giving takes on a whole new meaning. Because this year when you give, whether it's a gift to someone you love or a friend or to your church, when you give this year, it's really going to come from the heart. It's really going to mean something. These are meaningful pieces. And the most meaningful pieces of life are often found amongst our most difficult days. We can identify with that right now during these last months. And here's the thing. Mary and Joseph could identify with you in that as well. Here's the context. Um, when you look at where and when and what was happening when Jesus was born. There is this political scenario that's playing out in the world. 
And a lot of people have a lot of feelings about it. I don't know if you've ever lived through a season like that. Uh, I don't know if it's ever grasped your attention and your emotions or, or maybe you've chosen sides. Surely you're better than that. But it was going on in their world as well. And if you're not careful, things like that will capture your holiday. They will capture your heart. They will capture your effort and your attention. They will capture who you are and they will define you. But those are not the meaningful pieces of Christmas. Those are not the meaningful pieces of life. Why? Because we find that those things create tension, turmoil, division, and other emotions that we don't even really want to speak. Those are not the meaningful pieces. And so life gets boiled down to these moments. Mary and Joseph help us to see them. What are some of the meaningful pieces that, that they were able to discover in the midst of having to go and register? Not to vote, but to be counted, right? Um, and not to be counted because their vote mattered, but because the government wanted more of their money. I mean, you could get lost in that, right? You could feel that. That's the world they're living in, a, a very controlled environment. And this is the geopolitical context that's going on when Jesus was born. And, and Mary and Joseph have a mandate that you have to go and do this. And so they do. And they could get lost in all of that, but you begin to see that the unfolding of God speaking light into darkness, blessing into brokenness, hope into darkness and depression that people were going through and feeling, God has a different way of defining that for us. And Mary and Joseph discover the first thing that I think is a meaningful piece of Christmas. That is the overwhelming peace of his presence and his authority. The first meaningful piece that we can discover in some of our darkest, most difficult, challenging days is the overwhelming peace of the presence and the authority of God in our lives. When everything gets stripped away, images, finances, strength, physical ability, control, all of the things that we perhaps think that we have or that we think other people have, when all of that begins to fall apart, what you begin to realize is there is something that will grab you and that will hold you and that will give you a reason to live in the midst of life. And that is the overwhelming peace that comes from sensing his presence, and his authority over your life. Here's the thing. Who has authority in our world today? God does. And who is the one who is with us in the midst of every moment that we wrestle and that we battle through? God is. You will put your hope in others, right? You will put your hope in other people to bring you peace. You will put your hope in other people because you believe that they will be with you forever, their presence. And, and you will also either relinquish authority to others or perhaps you will maintain authority or you will give an image of your authority over life. But in reality... None of those pieces really exist. We've seen that in the last nine months plus. What does exist? The overwhelming peace that comes from God, acknowledging that he is with us, Emmanuel. He is there and he is present always. He never changes his mind. He never abandons. He never forsakes. He is always there. And there's not one thing that you can do about it. There's not one moment that he turns his back on us. Not one. That is the peace that comes from knowing the Savior who is born in Bethlehem. That is the peace that comes from knowing that his presence is with you. And yes, when authority goes out the window... Or when authority seems to take control of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. 
It's truly his authority that's at work. And he's always working out his perfect plan in spite of what we think, feel, desire, want. He's always working it out. In this passage, you have a government. Matter of fact, you have one of the most unique rulers in history. I'm not going to give you a history lesson, but even Shakespeare wrote about this guy, right? There's this gentleman, Caesar Augustus, who basically is the divine ruler over the entire world. I mean, if you want a great Star Wars episode, here's where it began, right? There's nothing new under the sun. People thought this guy was divine, Caesar Augustus. You had to worship this guy. But in the midst of a divine ruler, someone that was really just human, Jesus is born. The real authority was born. And the real authority, it's interesting because the real authority that was born, um, he didn't have to post that he was divine. I mean, he didn't have to go to social media. I mean, word like him spread, word about Jesus spread without him making a big deal about himself. I mean, what a great lesson for humanity to learn today, right? Because sometimes... We post, we picture, we show, we give something that really on the inside is not truly what's going on, right? In the midst of our most broken, difficult moments, that is where we begin to discover these gifts, these most meaningful pieces. And the first is the overwhelming peace of God, that he is with you and that he is in control. God was in control of this environment in which Jesus was born. And yes, they are having to go and register. And this obviously is a chore for Joseph and Mary. I mean, if there was a reason to be exempt, I mean, if you, you want to talk about a, an opportunity to check in some other way, they didn't have it. She is pregnant, expecting child. Nine months of this, right? I mean, she's right there in the final trimester. And ladies, you know what that means. <laughs> yeah, it's not the most comfortable season of your life if you've ever walked through that. You understand that. A and yet, Mary gets no grace from the authorities of the day. She has to suck it up, get on an animal, and have herself carted to another place. Their journey was treacherous. Their journey was long. And she's doing this while expecting a child. That's a strong woman. That's a strong lady. And in the midst of that challenge, what do you think she's doing? What you'll begin to discover as we read through the Christmas story is that Mary is looking for the meaningful pieces that God would give her in the midst of a world that had gone mad and crazy and that had lost faith and lost control. She's drawn into something greater. She finds the overwhelming peace because of the presence of God on her life by also knowing it's God who has the authority. Friends, God is in control. Jesus reminds us, Christmas reminds us, God is in control. He is with you. And he will bring you peace no matter what you're going through. He is with you. Isn't that good? That's a meaningful piece that's going to go beyond the way that we normally celebrate Christmas. As a matter of fact, this will boil down this season to what's simple and what matters the most. Meaningful pieces. That's the first one. The second meaningful piece that I see in this story, and, and, and this one is so real because Joseph and Mary have to go somewhere, and it shows me that there is the healing power of a place to call home. There is the healing power of a place that we call home. Home is such an interesting word because um, so many times we, we place home uh, as the location in which we live. Um, perhaps it's the place that you're renting or paying a mortgage on. It's, it's the new place that you're going to call yours. But here's what's fascinating about that. Um, it's always a work in progress, isn't it? 
um, whether you're renting or whether you're buying, um, you're going to always find that you're constantly giving to it. You're constantly paying for it. You're constantly investing into it. Home is not the facility. Um, so many times uh, we will call the things that we love, right? Those feel like home to us. So I want to make sure that my, my home is decorated this certain way for Christmas. But I, I know people that, hey, you've barely gotten the Thanksgiving decorations out. Much less put up and Christmas out, right? This year's different. Home is more than that. You know, we have this phrase that, that home is where the heart is, right? You've heard that phrase. You know, there's great Christmas movies written about that too, you know. But how true is that? You see, what makes a home is love. What, what makes a place meaningful is something significant, a piece that's significant beyond what we see or what we have to pay for or an address the love present, something significant that God is doing in the midst of that location, that's what makes home home. And look at what home meant for Mary and Joseph. They tackled the difficulty of the moment together. Together. As, as they went through this moment and she's ready to bring birth to God's son and she's having to make this trip. He walks with her through that moment. She's with him in that moment. They go to a place that has a heritage to it. They go to a place where it says he is of the house or the home. And he is of the line of David. It's very significant there. Because so many times in our running through life, we don't understand our heritage. We don't understand other people's heritage. Uh, we're busy as people. We're busy working. We're busy chasing. We're busy pursuing. Um, we're busy entertaining. Uh, we're busy filling time. But if you want to feel the real meaningful peace of Christmas, there is a healing power that I would dis encourage you, each of you, myself, all of us during the season, the healing power of a place that you call home. And it's the people that you genuinely and authentically love. You want to acknowledge them. You want to have them acknowledge you. And it's not about what you give or what you get. It's about what means the most. And the people in this story mean the most. Mary has Joseph. Joseph has Mary. They are going to have this moment where they bring to life our Savior and Lord together. And other people are going to celebrate that. That's what makes home, home. And what was home for them? Yes, in the midst of a world where they had to go to register, where it was a struggle and a challenge to get there, they fought through that together. They went to a place, by the way, that was not a hospital or a house. Isn't that fascinating? That the power of home and the power of where Jesus was born, it's not anything like you or I would define for our lives. Or anything that we would project for Christmas to have meaning. And yet, home for them and home for Jesus was a stall. A place outside. A place where only animals were worthy to stay. And yet in the midst of that, the grass, the hay on the ground, a thrown together manger where animals would eat, a place where the smells and the aromas were not these wonderful cam candles that you might light around your home to give you that ooh-la-la -la feeling for Christmas. Jesus was born to Joseph and Mary in a manger. For there was no room for them in the home. Home is so much more. And if you want to feel healing, wholeness, and health during this season of life, you will discover the healing power of Jesus and what truly makes a home, 
a home. The love that you have for the people around you. The love that the people around you have for you. And embrace that. Embrace that more than anything else. That is a meaningful and yet very simple piece to allow this Christmas in the midst of a year that many people will want to forget this Christmas to bring some of the greatest blessings, the most meaningful blessings that God has for you to life. And this Christmas might actually change your life because you find the meaningful pieces that matter. Joseph and Mary, they found that. And that brings me to the final meaningful piece when I look at this passage of these few verses that we've looked at today. Because remember, the most meaningful pieces of life are often found in our most difficult days, our most difficult moments. They're dealing with this difficulty. And yet, with a world that's very challenging, with a home that doesn't look much like a home, they are together. They are experiencing peace, presence, authority. They are experiencing His power in their life. And that leads to the third and final most meaningful piece. And Christmas reminds us that one of the most meaningful pieces of Jesus being born and of us celebrating Christmas the right way, remembering what it's all about, is that Christmas brings to us, the blessing of Christmas is the fulfillment of the deep longings within our soul. Christmas reminds us, Jesus reminds us that there are these deep longings within our souls. And Jesus reminds us of the fulfillment of the deepest longings within our souls. You see, here's the thing. Nine months. Nine months and a little change is what it takes to create a life. And in that life, What you have in this moment is that through the completion of those nine months, a life is given. A life is born. Something that didn't exist came to life. Ladies, if you've ever had that privilege of of giving birth to a child, here's the thing. The reality of the moment is nine months of suffering. Nine months of challenge. Nine months of stretching and growing and and hurting and and not sleeping nine months of all of these things and you understand that well but at the end of nine months there is this fulfillment from the deepest longing of who you are in your soul that makes all of those other nine months of struggle and challenge go away And the birth of Christ reminds us that it is the deepest longings of our souls that God ultimately will meet, that God ultimately will respond to, that God ultimately will intervene in. And for you, listen, it's been an interesting nine, ten, and some change months in our lives. You may have to wait nine months. You may have to wait nine years. God is a God of knowing exactly when to bring forth the answer and fulfill in our lives the greatest longing of our souls. Jesus is that answer naturally. Jesus is that answer. And that's why we capture Christmas because Jesus was born to rescue our souls. To rescue us in the midst of our most difficult days. Listen, as we've walked through this year, Jesus is the one who is the peace, the presence, and the authority. And at Christmas, we want to grab that. Jesus, he is the one who brings the healing power and helps us understand that home in this world, it changes. It looks different. But there's a longing for eternity, a longing for forever, a longing for a home. That will not change. A home where we are changed. And that comes through Jesus being born. Who is the fulfillment to the deepest longing of the souls of men and women like me, like you, like us. And all of those that you will be around and you will have impact on this year. There is the fulfillment to the things that we long for in our souls. Jesus being born is God's reminder. He's got this. He knows. 
He's present. He will. He is with us, Emmanuel. And he knows you. He knows what you're walking through. He knows who you are. And he loves you deeply. He came to earth and was born to rescue us. To walk with us. To touch our hearts and save our souls. And that is one of the most meaningful pieces of Christmas. It wasn't the inn. It wasn't that they had a home. It wasn't that they had to struggle to get to their location. It wasn't all of the peripheral details of life. The meaningful pieces that mattered the most were found in the midst of life. Life. Challenges. Cancer. COVID. Loss. Struggle. And yet in the midst of that, you will discover God's most meaningful pieces when you capture this reality that it is the overwhelming presence of God that gives you peace and reminds you that the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one with all authority, He was born. It reminds you that in your homes this year, Find the healing power of Christ. Nothing else will heal your heart. Nothing else will heal your mind. Nothing else will heal your emotions. And nothing else will heal your body. It is the presence of Christ in the home of your heart, in the home of those that are around you. Find that. And that's going to project you forward. And then ultimately, let God know the deep longings within your soul because Jesus is the reminder that God will fulfill what he's placed in your heart. That's who he is. It's what Jesus did. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Can I pray with you? Father, I thank you today for all of the people that are here. We all need your help to capture in this season of life the most meaningful pieces of what matters the most. Thank you for friends, family, loved ones. And thank you more than all of that for Jesus. He is the reason that we celebrate. In his name I pray. Amen. As we think about meaningful pieces at Christmas, at Calvary we have done and are doing some things this year. A little in adoption, in a, in a little different way, to adopt some new practices, new ways of making sure that we continue to impact lives. And so uh, our Christmas for families this year, we just decided we're not going to miss that opportunity to be a blessing in the midst of brokenness to others. So we're doing it. And so I want you to watch this video with me as we watch together um, and we connect with one of the ways this year that we can be a blessing to others. So let me invite you to watch this video with me. Hi, I'm Audra and I'm the missions coordinator here at Calvary. I want to take a minute and explain what we're going to be doing throughout our Christmas missions outreach this year. It's called Christmas for Families. And what that means is that we're going to be able to provide Christmas for children here in New Orleans and provide basic needs of the children around the world. Here in New Orleans, we're going to be working with our local ministry partner, Bethel Family Housing. This ministry focuses on moms and helping them find jobs and a safe environment for them to raise their children. We're adopting 30 kids. And what that means is we're going to be providing Christmas gifts and clothing for them in order to make Christmas memories to last them a lifetime. Now, overseas in Romania, we're going to be working with our global ministry partners that we've worked with for many years now. And with these children, we're going to be meeting their basic needs. This means with the cold winter ahead, we're going to be providing mittens, gloves, and scarves so these children can actually have these basic items. This is a moment for us, the people of Calvary, to come together and be a blessing here locally and globally. 
To learn more how you can adopt and be a part of this ministry outreach, come to the Welcome Desk and find out more information. So you see, this year we've maintained our commitment to be a blessing in the midst of everything. And so uh, if, if you have not had the chance and you feel led, and this is something that God has put into your heart, we still have some children that are both local and, yes, also international, um, that we want to be a blessing to. And so you can do one of two things. Um, if you're comfortable, you can connect with Audra here today at the end of our service. That's part of what we do missionally to impact our local world, both here and internationally. Um, and likewise, if you'd like to do that online, you can surely send us an email. We still have some children and some families that we would like to adopt and bless this Christmas. Um, likewise, uh, I know that you received this week the letter that I'm talking about related to our church. So here's one of the things that we're going to do with Christmas this year. We're going to take care of our home. That's what we're going to do. So our Christmas offering this year is very substantial as we approach December the 20th because we're going to do it right. We're not going to let moments of challenge push us back. We're going to do it right. So we've already repaired some of our properties and facilities without having anything that we're waiting on as far as details and numbers. We just did that by faith because I'm not going to flinch. It's the right thing to do for our church. So December 20th is important as you pray about what you're going to give. And I'm going to ask you to do that because we're going to use that this year to continue to help our church move forward. And let me give you another example. Last week, working through things, continuing to process, and someone says, Pastor, I'm going to send you a $25,000 check. We got that check this week. That person is not connected to our church. They watch us some online. They just believe in who we are. They just believe in it. They believe in our church. They believe in what we do. Pastor, I can tell this is meaningful. I want to support you. This week, someone sends me a card. Pastor, I can tell what's going on in your soul. And I'm for you and I'm for your church. Here's a check for $16,000 this past week. Now listen to me. Meaningful pieces are often discovered in the most difficult and broken moments of our lives. Are we going to pay attention? Or are we just going to dismiss all of that? You see, I can see the overwhelming presence that brings me peace from knowing he's got this. Right? I can see that in the midst of moments where there are great challenge, God is going to bring his blessing. Let me encourage you. Pray about December the 20th. And be faithful to what God puts in your heart. We have an opportunity to turn obstacles into something great. So seize your moment. Don't flinch. And watch how God will use this Christmas to launch us forward into 2021. I love you. God bless you. For all of my online friends that I've seen and that I've visited with even this past week, I know God is going to work miracles on your behalf. And I want to pray that for all of you right now. Father, thank you for my friends. Thank you for this family. Thank you for your sons and daughters. And irregardless of where they are and what they're walking through, may they sense your peace, your presence, your authority. And may they understand that you are a God who's simply going to fulfill the greatest longings of our soul. Thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.